show you in this segment how to sew the grid easily. I know it sounds very, very simple, but we have come up with some little steps that make it very easy and very quick because in all the patterns and all the things that you make, the actual texturizing of the fabric is what takes the time. So if we can take some time off that, then you can get to make more and more things and it becomes more fun. The first thing, of course, is here's my sample. This is uh, Thomas Tozier's fabric. We're always thankful to them for what they provide for us. And Texture Magic from Superior Threads, which is just pinned on here. I'm going to sew it on my trusty Bernina 440, which I really love. And this is set in an easy table, which if you have never seen it, it is a wonderful portable sewing cabinet that gets you the right, the right height. If you don't have a lot of room to sew, this is really what you need. Anyway, here is your grid. I'm going to do a grid on this, but I'm not going to mark it at all because most people don't know it, but in their accessory box, they have this. Everybody has this in their accessory box, but nobody knows what it is, especially me. When I first saw that, I thought, hmm, something I'll never use. Well, wrong again. I've used this many, many times, and especially with, texture ma with doing texture magic. This is a sewing guide that you fit into your machine so that you can use this as your guide and you can set this at any length or width away from your sewing line. So what I'll do first is I'll just sew a f my first line. Now I have a darker thread in the bobbin so that when we're done we can see it. I sew with my needle down so that when I stop I can just open this and I can go to I guess if I'm using it with or without the guide if I want it just a, a foot apart a, using this foot measurement apart then needle down that way I can go back and forward back and forward without having to cut my threads without having to pull it through the back and then maybe take it out of the bobbin. So again, needle down. Now some machines have a pivot that you can just do that in one measurement. I stop one width of the foot difference and then I turn. And that's going to be exactly the measurement I want. Now you can tell this is a little bit wonky, but truly it's not going to matter a bit. Just so long as you have some sort of, so long as it's not really wide and really thin, narrow I guess is the word. So you can just go back and forth like this. Stop, needle down. Okay, now what if I want to make this wider and it's on fabric that, that I don't want to be fooling around with, turning back and forward. Okay, I want, it, I want a perfect inch. So using my ruler and the guide, there's a little hole back here at the back of the foot. If you have a guide in your accessory box, you have some place to attach it. And it may only attach to certain feet, but you have a place to attach it. So it just works by placing it through the hole like this. I'll put my one inch at the needle I'll bring this out to one inch here. Now when I sew, the stitches are going to be exactly one inch apart, the rows are. Now this little screw back here, you tighten it to hold it steady. But this can always be moved up and down so as you pull, if you pull something out and feed it back in, you can always put your project back in. Now I will tell you there is one warning with using this. For all the machines that have this little screw back here, don't screw it till it falls out because it takes about two hours to put back in. For some reason, the thread on there is so small, the beginning thread, you will say choice words and you will probably have to do some really good deeds to get past what you're thinking when that thing comes out. It's really bad. Okay, so now I've got my line that I'm going to follow just like I did here. But the difference now is, as I come down, 
using the guide, I cannot pivot because when I come back this way, I need a line as a guide. And so now, the difference with using my guide is, every time I use it, and I'll keep the needle down, every time I use it, when I get to the bottom, I'm then going to cut it and start again. That way, my guide Now you may have to use a guide if you are wanting something that is a check or something else that has lines that you must follow and if you don't follow them they'll look very wonky. But uh, to tell the truth, we sort of dispensed with this after we found that this was a really great thing to use. And the pivoting this way using my measurement of a foot, coming back. That became actually the fastest way for me to sew. But if you're afraid that your lines are too wonky, then, then you might want to use the other method. Then coming the other way, you do the exact same thing. I come down, and now I'm just gonna grid back forward this way. Stop, pivot, foot, back. And this works even if you were going to do it diagonally. Your edges here, when you have any anything that you're using your texture magic, most sizes are made so that you can oops. most sizes are made so that you can um, you you are going to trim your piece so if you trim your piece these edges are going to be cut off anyway and I found this this is just a, it added a lot of speed to it if you can just keep sewing come around and do that and that's kind of the first way to do the grid.